I, I think that uh, the idea of uh, having here a representation of the new of the new members is an excellent one, and uh, I thank uh, the, the president for asking me to to say one or two minutes uh, of words about uh, uh, Alana Spe. Unfortunately, we know each other since. 50 years, and uh, since now we are talking to a general audience, uh, here what is happening is the following. If you have uh, your hands uh, put like this, which is uh, entangled in, uh, in English, or intrigué en français, and then uh, you open this uh, entanglement and you have a uh, one, the other, one side, the other one, this, this becomes two independent things. Instead, if these two things are not macroscopic, but are uh, small particles, like photons, which are particles of light, and you start uh, with a system which is entangled, even when uh, they move uh, apart, one from the other, and not only of two meters, but even one uh, uh, on a planet uh, and the other one uh, on another one, uh, long distance, according to the quantum mechanics, uh, this continues to be uh, the same system. This means uh, many important things, that if you do something on a photon at right, and Alain is the one who demonstrated this, uh, opening uh, uh, a, a totally new landscape, in, not only in quantum information, but uh, in, uh, in this uh, revolution, which is uh, the second revolution of quantum physics. Only one thing I want to say, that Alan is very much active also in uh, science politics. So uh, in Europe, he is convinced that Euro Europeans so we interact, uh, I mean, so much. And so it's not only the theory, the experiment, but also the, uh, the advancement of science and technology in our continent. Thank you, Massimo, and now then I speak to you. Merci. It's a it's, uh, fantastic pleasure to be here and to become uh, an associate, I don't know what is the official term, or fellow, associate fellow, foreign fellow, of this academia, which is the oldest among all the academia in uh, Europe. And not only that, but it is famous for having defended Galileo and thus good signs against obscurantism. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the quantum mysteries. And in fact, there are two great mysteries uh, for quantum mechanics. The one that uh, Massimo cited, that is entanglement, but I will start with something which is simpler to present to a general audience, and so I will start with that. This first big quantum mystery is wave-particle duality. Wave-particle duality were uh, uh, established or appeared when, at the beginning of the 19th century, Planck and Einstein came with the idea that light, uh, that light is made of quanta, made of small particles, which have been called later photons. But uh, at that time, uh, light was considered as a wave, and in fact there are many, many facts which demand to represent light as a wave. Interference, diffraction, all these wonderful things which were known since centuries, and in particular since the work of Young in UK and uh, Fresnel in France at the beginning of the 19th century, uh, it was clear that light is a wave. On the other hand, Planck and Einstein came with ideas that it should be described as a particle. So it's a, it's a serious uh, question. And Einstein, once again, is the one uh, who stresses that, in fact, we must consider light 
both as a wave and a particle. And not all physicists know this paper of Einstein, so I just cite it for my colleague physicists. You should, it's easy to find on the web. Uh, it was in German, it's translated in English, in French, I'm pretty sure it has to be translated in Italian. And the idea is the following. Einstein was able to calculate with one of these wonderful Einstein reasoning fluctuations of the thermal radiation, of the black body radiation. And this calculation gives two terms. The first term can be interpreted as considering light as particles, and the second term has to be considered as due to the fact that light is made of many waves with different frequency, which give many different bit nodes. And the fact that there are the two aspects in that, Einstein concludes light is both a wave and a particle. And if you know history of physics, he's certainly the first one to say this kind of thing. Later, uh, Louis de Broglie in France, 14 years later, uh, say that things that we think are particles, electrons, have also to be considered as waves, and this is really the foundation of quantum mechanics. And uh, what I want to show here is an experiment which has been done not so far. It, it, uh, the first experiment was done in 86 by Philippe Grangier, my first PhD student, and myself. And the experiment I am going to describe here was performed in 2005. But in my opinion, it's the best way to grab why wave particle duality is really surprising. Uh, it turns out that starting, let's say, in 1986, in Grangier thesis, we have been able to produce single photons. Before the time, it was impossible. Photons were always produced in an undetermined number of photons. But since 86, we know how to produce one and only one photon. So here you have a source producing one and only one photon, and this photon comes in a beam here and the upper part of the beam will be deflected down with a prism, and the lower part of the beam will be detected up on the beam. If words have a meaning, and if there is only one photon, either the photon will come here and be deflected, deflected up, or the photon will arrive here and be deflected down. And now here I have two detectors. And if I have one and only one particle, the probability to have the two detectors detecting something simultaneously will be zero. If you would do that for any source of light, you would not find zero, because in any ordinary light, there is always a distribution of the number of photons. But if we have one and only one photon, then this probability, uh, the probability to have the two detectors firing simultaneously will be zero. And uh, in contrast to a classical situation. And uh, this is what we observed in 96 with Grangier when we were able to develop the first source of single photon. And we claim that this really proves particle-like behavior. Then you can take almost, well, you can take the same source, the same prism. Okay, it's called a Fresnel B prism. Fresnel is my hero, so I insist on doing experiments with devices invented by Fresnel. Okay. Now what you do, rather than putting two detectors here, you, put, you observe here in the overlap of the two beams. If it was a classical wave, you would expect interference fringes. The fact is that even with a single particle, we are going to observe interference fringe. And I show you here. Here you are going to see on the screen the arrival of photons one after the other one. So let's play it, if I can find, yes, okay, let's go. Now you see photon arriving here, can you see it from the side? You have dots, okay, and you see photons arriving, and after a while you see that they don't arrive uniformly in all places. In these places the probability is bigger, in these places the probability is weaker, and we observe fringes, interference fringes. And to understand an interference fringe, you have to admit that you have a wave which passes simultaneously upwards and simultaneously downwards. Which means that the same source, the same device, 
for which in the first experiment we concluded that it is either on the upper side or on the lower side, now this, exactly the same source, same light, we have to accept the fact that it passes simultaneously on the two paths. In the first experiment, it's a particle-like behavior. In the second experiment, it's wave-like behavior. The fact that the same object is sometimes behaving as a wave and sometimes behaving as a particle is called wave-particle duality. It's very difficult to swallow. You cannot swallow it from a classical point of view. Okay. Uh, for my colleagues, uh, physicists, we have used the same device to demonstrate the famous Wheeler's Daily Choice experiment. And if you want to know more, I will tell you. But, you know, I understand that I have to be short, so I think I cannot go in details. Now, the fact on which I would like to, to insist is that this first quantum revolution, which is based on wave particle duality, was a fantastic conceptual revolution. But it was not only conceptual. It also led to a society change, to the invention and development of fantastic devices which have totally changed our society. To name them, laser, transistor, integrated circuit, you will all agree that this has totally changed our society, probably as much as the invention of the heat engine at the end of the 18th century changed our society. The society of information and communication is totally based on transistors, computers, and laser. And each of these devices has been invented by the best physicists trying to use quantum mechanics to describe how light is emitted, how electrons propagated in matter, etc. It is not a, a, a young guy in a, in a garage in California who invented these kind of things. It's the best physicist of the time who invented these devices. So this conceptual revolution of wave particle duality <coughs> led to all this uh, uh, technological revolution and the information society. Let us now go to the second quantum mystery, which is entanglement, which Massimo did his best to give you an idea. It's impossible to, to, to really describe, and I will tell you why uh, a little later. It's based on the concept of entanglement, which is a new concept which was identified by Einstein with his colleagues Podolsky and Rosen, Bohr immediately reacted, and Schrödinger, and then there is another big name, which is John Bell. So what is the reasoning of Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen? The reasoning is the following. He says, I have two particles which are prepared here, and now I separate them. And I make a measurement on this one, and if I make a similar measurement on the other one, same type of measurement, I find a strong correlation. Strong correlation means, for instance, I like this example, if you have two twin brothers, and they live in different parts of the world. One lives in Italy, the other one in uh, America or whatever. If somebody comes and looks at the color of the eyes, it's very likely that the color of the eyes are the same. So this observer will find the same property. He could also look at the color of the hair, etc., etc. And uh, there is no mystery, because uh, you know that they have been, between quote, produced by the same, with the same set of chromosomes, and this set of chromosomes have determined the color of the eyes, the color of the hair, etc. So Einstein looking at this uh, strong correlation here, say, OK, if we have strong correlation like that, it means that when the two particles were emitted from the common source, they shared some common property like chromosomes, OK, common genes and things like that. It turns out, and this was discovered later by John Bell, 
that in fact the correlations that you predict with quantum mechanics are stronger than any correlation that you could describe like for twin brother. And the only image that you can make of that, which is a crazy image, is the following. When I measure something here, for instance, the color of the eyes of the, of the guy, okay? Until the last moment, the color is not yet determined. It might be as well blue as dark. And really, you, can, you, you have an indirect test of the fact that everything is allowed. But at one moment, you make the measurement, you find blue, and then the crazy image that you have is that the other brother, which is 10,000 kilometers away, immediately gets blue eyes. And if you had found dark, then immediately the other white would have dark eyes. This is called quantum non-locality. It's totally crazy, and I will comment a little more about that later. Bohr disagreed with Einstein, but, uh, and just somebody who understood as early as 1935 that really entanglement is crazy is when Schrodinger wrote a paper to comment about Einstein and Bohr, and he wrote, this paper does not aim at a solution of the paradox, it rather adds to it if possible. It's just to emphasize the fact that it is really very mysterious. And so uh, the point of view of Einstein that you could explain this correlation like for twin brother does not work, and the fact that it does not work is due to a theorem established by a theorist called John Bell, and there have been a full series of experiments showing that, more and more sophisticated, and so these are contribution to this series of experiments, which, for the first time, established the fact that, for the first time, established quantum non-locality. Let's put it this way. Okay. Now, entanglement is used for a new quantum revolution. And uh, so entanglement is at the heart of several quantum technologies. First, you have heard of the idea of quantum computing. Nobody knows if a quantum computer will ever exist, but there are things which exist. Quantum simulator, quantum calculation. The idea is that there are some problems which are so difficult, so complicated, that mathematicians can show that it would take an immense time to solve the problems. I mean, uh, you make order of magnitude and you find, oh, to solve this problem, it would take as long as the age of the universe, and you would need a memory with as many qubits that the number of particles in the whole universe. So these are kind of problems that we think, we are almost sure, you cannot solve them with standard computer. Using the idea of entanglement, you can hope to solve these problems. And this all the idea of the quantum computer. I'm not yet done. Two minutes? Perfect. It's almost too much. Don't believe it. Another application of this idea of entanglement is quantum cryptography. Quantum cryptography is about security in transmission. And uh, you know that this is a very important issue. Now, on Internet, we not only send uh, uh, the, the number of our credit cards, but there is also exchanges between embassies, etc. You remember the WikiLeaks and all this stuff. So security is very important. It turns out that entanglement is a very good way for making communication between Alice and Bob absolutely sure. There are also interesting things called quantum teleportation. Well, quantum teleportation is not like, like in Star Wars. You don't transport uh, my friend Francesco De Martini from here to Paris, but we could transport the quantum state of 
Francesco from here to Paris. And these may be extremely useful in quantum information. And by the way, I'm glad to cite that Roma is one of the places where quantum teleportation was demonstrated. Okay, let me conclude with what is, in my view, but more and more people share the view, quantum, the second quantum revolution. The second quantum revolution is uh, something which is based on entanglement, entanglement being the revolutionary concept that has been clarified with light, and another thing that I have not yet quoted, which was implicit, and I insist not all physicists realize that, in particular theorists like you, Giorgio, you have to realize that. A very important ingredient is the fact that starting in the late 19, or in the 1970s, it became possible to observe, control, and trap single quantum objects, single electron, produce single photon, manipulated single atoms, a uh, single photon of Serge Haroche, etc. People as smart as Schrödinger, one of the founding fathers of quantum mechanics, thought that this was absolutely impossible. They thought that quantum mechanics was about describing large ensemble of microscopic particles and that you could never do anything else than observing large ensemble of particles. And so for these people, having probabilities was natural. But since the 1970s, we know that we can observe single quantum particles. Realizing the importance of entanglement and realizing that we know how to manipulate single object is at the root of the second quantum revolution. And to finish, I want just to say that it was far from obvious. Somebody as smart as Richard Feynman, which is, who is certainly one of the smartest physicists of the second half of the 20th century. In his lecture on physics in 1960, he wrote, the only mystery of quantum mechanics is wave particle duality. But 20 years later, in a paper which is considered the founding paper of quantum computer, he wrote, all my life I fooled myself ignoring another quantum mystery, and the other quantum mystery is entanglement. And Feynman being Feynman, as soon as he recognized that entanglement is something new, he invents the notion of quantum computing. This is just to tell you. Okay, so it's time to finish. So to make you happy, Mr. Chairman, mon cher Giorgio, uh, this is what I presented. Thank you.